<clears throat> so guys, as I undress from being a hipster for five minutes, <laughs> I'm just kidding, but I do listen to a lot of music in a very hipster-like man. Anyways, so guys, today we're going to be talking about these little things that tend to dangle around our necks, and they are neck knives, no big surprise by that. And today we're going to be doing a little bit of a comparison between my own personal use experience between um, larger neck knives and smaller neck knives. I have two for both comparisons, two larger, and what I mean by a larger neck knife, I mean something that's around nine inches in overall length, and I'm talking about smaller neck knives, I'm talking about something like this Browse Blades Silent Soldier V2, which is around five to six inches in overall length, if not smaller. So today we're going to be going over the EDC kind of usefulness of them and which one I prefer to rock in an EDC situation and kind of what my recommendation is and just my overall thoughts and opinions on it. Without any further ado, let's jump into this. So guys, like I said, that is going to be today's message and I'm going to put this one back in its sheath just so I don't get it all wet because it's very, very, uh, very slushy out right now. As you can probably tell, it's a little bit different than I'm wearing a short sleeve t-shirt and it's completely white behind me, but that's because it's about 35 above, which still sounds chilly for most people, but it's actually not that cold for me. So at this point in the year, I'm kind of used to cold temperatures and 30 is not that cold. <laughs> so anyways, uh, <clears throat> for my comparison for larger neck knives, I have these two. I want running as actual neck knives and this is the good old Pull Force November one and on this side is my rat three so ontario knives rat three so <clears throat> for the smaller neck knives as i already went into this is a browse blade silent soldier v2 and this right here is a tops mini scandy or msk mini scandy knife or msk that was pretty funny some guy was like talking about me saying like what do you think of the msk and i'm just like no comments yet because i'm actually getting an msk so uh i wanted to actually get some use on it and kind of talk about it, think about it, like use it for a little while. So anyways, so my overall thoughts for these two different knives. My first thing when it comes to an EDC situation is that I approach both larger and smaller uh, neck knives with a different philosophy. When I carry something like this, I generally, as has been in my past, uh, I generally carry these for defensive options. I carry them kind of as a wilderness slash defensive option. I, if I get into a survival situation and I need something thicker, heavier duty than just what I normally carry in my pocket, like this uh, UltraTech here. This is just an UltraTech out the front. If I need something that's more robust and heavier duty than an UltraTech or, you know, just whatever folder I'm carrying that day, generally I like to have a large fixed blade that's kind of outdoorsy, but primarily for the most part, I don't really find myself in that situation. Or what I mean is that most of the time when I'm heading out in an everyday situation, I'm going to places like my college campus. So I'm not really leaving going out into the wilderness where it'd really be that applicable to have something like a really sturdy outdoors Knife because it's just I'm not going to be anywhere near the outdoors but I do carry them I do rock larger fixed blades for the defensive perks they have of course the deep concealability is nice because they can rock underneath you know underneath all your layers and this will still be right there and ready to go in case you need it but like I was saying for the most part my philosophy when I carry a larger fixed blade it's for defense it's for protection it's for if I think I'm going to need it and I'm not allowed to have a gun then generally I'll carry <clears throat> a larger fixed blade for defensive situations. So what I mean by this is they're not going to see much dirt time. They're not going to see me pulling it out, opening a little package and stuff like that. However, it kind of changes when we go over to fixed blades like these smaller, smaller neck knives like the Browse Blade V2 and the MSK, the philosophy changes a little bit. Now I still do carry these not so much as an outdoors knife because especially this V2 Browse Blade Silent Soldier, it's not really that good because it's so tiny, but I do still carry this for a backup defensive option if I need to pull it out and you know I have something that's sturdy robust and defensive but primarily if I'm rocking one of these smaller neck knives I'll have something like this ultra tech that is my primary defensive option because this is far superior to this or really any of these for strictly defensive speaking this double-edged dagger is going to do a lot of damage very fast but 
I shall carry it as a part of a self-defense setup if I do need it water dripping all over the place uh, so I do carry it if I still need it for defensive situation but primarily the philosophy changes over to the fact of I actually carry this as a box opener a package opener and just rock it as an actual EDC knife for opening things or for doing everyday tasks so generally the philosophy does change a little bit in a <clears throat> in a EDC climate now I am going to be doing another video similar to this Sorry, there's snow getting all up in this thing. But um, I'm gonna be doing a video similar to this, but a little bit different where I talk about smaller versus larger neck knives in bushcraft. So for that video, I'm not gonna say anything on that, but it's, it's still a little bit different. But for these primarily, they actually get more of a utilitarian role. And so that's kind of how this one especially is outfitted. It's outfitted to be very comfortable in the hand, to be able to perform tasks like opening, cutting, slicing, doing those types of things. Now both the MSK and the especially the MSK, but even the Silent Soldier can make pretty good, pretty stellar in my opinion, um, self-defense tools, but um, definitely you need some training, kind of just practice with them before you really start to deploy these as defensive knives, but they can serve in that role pretty well from what I can see and from how I would use them, I'd say they're pretty good for especially a last ditch. Once again, not as good as this Ultratech here, the dagger, but, um, they could definitely go into that role. So overall, their usefulness for me is pretty high up there. I kind of like the convenience of them. I'm not a huge, once again, being that most of the time I would carry neck knives and never really use them because I was having them as a defensive option. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of new for me to reach up here, you know, like pop this neck knife off and then just like cut a box or, you know, a plastic container or whatnot, you know, just do whatever you gotta do in a day's time. It is kind of fun and it is very easy. I do like this whole being able to just grab it, pop it out cut it um, things to keep in mind that generally I don't use these things too much out in the public because they bring a lot of attention so <clears throat> I kind of use them around the house more as a quick kind of like pop it out cut something okay I'm done you know just sheath it back up and then go on my daily tasks it's a little bit faster for me and I find it a little bit easier to do than even these um, folding knives such as this is a blue mini grip so you know a little bit easier, a little bit more intuitive, but either way, it's a nice and kind of fun rig to run. So, anyways, the other thing here, of course, is the Exotac Nano Striker XL. That's kind of how they run on themselves all day. But anyways, so that's kind of my overall thoughts and how I use them and my approach to smaller neck knives. I will say they are definitely quite useful and until you really try out a smaller neck knife, um, you won't really know how, just how useful they actually really can be. I understand there's a lot of people, Ashley included, she's not here right now, but Ashley included who don't like running these bigger um, fixed blades and that's totally understandable because once again I think we went to as we went into another video you know her chest isn't as long as mine so naturally I can conceal and carry these better for my own personal body just length and size but I think she will really enjoy also running these smaller neck knives kind of once again as a defensive knife but also as just a utilitarian about the only takeaway I really can see through downsizing between something like an MSK, and the MSK is probably the more practical of these two, though I personally love Silent Soldiers. Anyone that doesn't know me or hasn't stayed or hasn't been around the channel a lot may not know, but I do love Browse Blade Silent Soldiers. But um, the MSK is probably the more practical of the two, especially as a defensive and as a everyday carry kind of knife. It would really make a nice little knife if you had to hold it in a reverse grip and really bear that blade because this thing is sharp, it's pointy, and uh, it is a very, very little vicious blade. So I really like the MSK for an EDC situation. And I think that honestly, uh, kind of rolling into another use philosophy for smaller fixed blades, smaller neck knives, is for women. Because once again, my chest can bear this a lot easier. 
and can hold this, you know, kind of conceal it a lot better. Hopefully you guys can kind of see, you know, this is about where it sits on me. So you can see it sits pretty high up. It's really no problem for me to carry this. But for a smaller sized woman or a smaller framed woman, it would be harder for them to carry such large knives like the Rat or the N1. But an MSK can be equally as effective and deadly or as useful just for opening packages and stuff, but it fit a lot better because just a size comparison between the N1 here and the MSK, you guys can kind of see there putting them butt to butt. They both have lanyards, but butt to butt, you can see that the MSK is significantly smaller than the uh, Pull Force N1. So overall, it is also a really good option for women who want to run neck knives. And so I'm also gonna have Ashley do her kind of take on neck knives when she gets more experienced on these two smaller neck knives in my collection. But <clears throat> anyways, guys, those are kind of my thoughts and how I look at smaller neck knives. I do really like them for EDC, and I think they add a whole new potential to an EDC or an everyday carry uh, setup or rig. So you're definitely gonna be seeing more of these smaller uh, neck knives in integrated into the flow of my EDC updates. And definitely, I really like these things. And if you guys are thinking about it at all, I would definitely recommend trying out probably the first one I would recommend is a SOG Snarl if you're thinking about really small neck knives because the SOG Snarl is basically it's the Warren Cliff version of the V1. So the V1 Silent Soldier didn't have this awesome little finger ring here and I really do like this kind of finger ring here because it really helps guard your middle finger here but it doesn't have that, but it's pretty good, and it also is a worn cliff, not a drop point like this. But I'd recommend that knife, because you can get into that knife for around $40. But if that's still too much for you, definitely I'd recommend checking out a CRKT Foltz Minimalist. And so those are two knives that are really affordably priced, but also really effective. And they really kind of, they're kind of like... If you're not sure you want to invest fully in really small neck knives like this, they're a really way, great way to get into it without putting a whole lot of money. Because the MSK is around this one, because this is a little bit of a special coloring, because it's black handle and tan blade. This one's around $70, and this one right here is around 100 bucks. So, yeah, these two are a little bit more expensive options out there. But um, before you jump into something super expensive, especially like a true Browse Blade Silent Soldier, I would highly encourage check out like the uh, Sog Snarl because it'll give you a really good idea of how the uh, Browse Blade Silent Soldier performs without the extreme price of this. However, this does have a way better steel than the Sog Snarl. So anyways, <clears throat> if you're interested in trying kind of one of these, but you don't fully want to commit to the really expensive price, definitely check out the Snarl. And the Fultz Minimalist is pretty close to this. Obviously the Fultz Minimalist doesn't have a different grind blade shape, but as far as handle goes, it's kind of similar. So anyways, guys, that's kind of my thoughts and opinions on these two smaller and these two bigger knives. I still really like bigger fixed blades for survival, or not for survival, but for everyday carry. And these are definitely more of a bush option for me. I like having a larger, not quite full sized like what my normal fixed blade is, but these, but for everyday carry, these still make a pretty awesome pairing and definitely really awesome for defense. I mean, this is a lot more opposing than this tiny little guy on you. So anyways, it's a little bit of a debate, but I'm gonna be playing around with these systems, learning a little bit more. And definitely this is gonna be a future gear banter when both Ashley and I have a lot more experience with smaller neck knives. I just kinda wanted to give you guys some of my initial impressions and kinda how I think right now about fixed, or fixed blades, but also primarily neck knives and smaller neck knives, both sizes. Anyways guys, that's all for now. God bless and I'm out.